Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Amen. Um, we're kind of talking about the same thing in men's and women's just in a different way because God made us for victory. And if you look at, we don't have this in our notes, but first John four, four, just write it down. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a believers meeting. Everybody in here is born again. If not after Thursday night, everyone recommitted. So we're in him and he's victorious. And so he's not still de deciding about you. He's already made up his mind, victory, 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 success, yes. success, success for every single one of us. So this is a matter of us getting in the flow of what he's already made available. We're not trying to earn it. We're not trying to prove ourselves to him or be worth the victory or worth his power or worth his, his anointing. No, he's already made up his mind about us. It's just eliminating the things that basically zap our strength. And so you can title uh, there women of valor. And this came up in our heart in Proverbs 31. And we use this verse a lot or this whole chapter, but fortunately we're not going to unpack all of it. Y'all we can today. Like we did that last year, probably the year before everyone's trying to cook better, get up earlier, sew their own clothes. We're not, we're just not <laughs> doing it this year. We're just going to focus on five things or seven things. We started with five, but you added two. You or no, you added, you had to have at five, six, seven. Oh yeah, it is two. Okay. <laughs> Son <de liberation. laughs> I like the candles though. I like the candles. Okay. Yes. You added two. I'm logical. She's emotional. Yes. Candles. We the added. Oh, oh, gosh. oh gosh. Someone pick that up for us, please. We added two. Yes. So we're going to look at seven things that destroy our strength. But before we do that, our foundation verse, Proverbs 31, 11, when you read, I have in, um, they encouraged us to get this kind of Bible at Rhema and I really like it. Mom had always had one too. It's, um, uh, Thompson chain reference. Yes. And there's a lot of great notes in there. If you don't have a Thompson chain reference, and maybe we have them in the bookstore, Siobhan will order it for you. Or you could probably get one on Amazon, but Proverbs 31 11 says the heart of her husband safely trusts her so that he shall have no need of spoil. We want, and, and really that, that whole phrase there that refers to us being trustworthy and our husbands being safe is the result of what the Thompson chain reference says, uh, uh, we're being women or wives of valor. And that actually means we have strength of mind in regard to danger. The quality which enables a man to encounter danger with firmness and courage. So really, we can validate and bring life to the manhood and the strength of our husband in our strength. Now, in many cases, we, we are, as the word refers to, the weaker vessel, but there's a place in him. And, and so wife of valor means strength of mind in regard to danger, mentally tough. Right. You know, Hallelujah. Not mental. You know, I got a text the other day from a, a young person, you know, please pray for me and my family, you know, and I'm like, okay, what's the prayer request? You know, just mental disorders, anxiety in my family. Like that's such a thing. That's not a thing for us in Christ, in Christ. We, we've not been given a spirit of fear. So let's find out how the enemy has got in and, and stolen what belongs to us. So a wife of valor that can actually, you know, I want my husband to trust me. I want him to, to have no need of spoiled to be confident that when he leaves, when he goes, when he's doing what he's doing for our home, he's, he can do it with confidence because I'm strong. I'm strong in my place. So my strength can actually feed into his strength. Um, so it's the quality which enables a man to encounter danger with firmness and courage. Praise the Lord. So we're going to talk about seven things that destroy strength and 
these are things that you don't do. Yeah. Well, number one, and it's the most important, and it kind of goes along with what Pastor uh, Dean was talking about in our covenant uh, commandment, number one, and that's to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And to have a relationship with God, you need to have a quiet time. Yeah. And I know we have a lot of new people. If you look around, there's some young couples here that, that I, don't, I don't really know. I haven't had fellowship with a great deal. I've tried yeah. to greet you um, and get to know you, but maybe you don't know. And uh, some of the things that are important to enhance your relationship with the Father. You've got to grow up. You see, when you first get saved, you're a baby, and you've got to grow on up in the things of God. That's what's expected of you by God. And and so we have all the tools that really are necessary, and we're even getting more tools that are necessary to help you grow up. And so once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there because you'll do like I did. I got saved. I got rededicated. I was saved, I was saved, and saved. I mean, I I got saved every Sunday because yeah. I had sinned, and then you got got to <laughs> get got to re up, and um, so when I realized that, okay, I can't just get saved every Sunday, live like hell all yeah. week long, and then get saved the next Sunday. It doesn't work that way. And so we want to give you the tools so you can grow up in the things of God, and that is have a quiet time. Yes. And if you don't have a quiet time, I'm just going to briefly tell you how to have a quiet time. And because the word commands us to do this, Joshua 1.8, and this is a scripture that you really need to... Um, Go ahead and mark in your Bible because it says it's talking about the Word of God. You have to get down established in your heart and in your kid's heart. You yeah. know, just a plug for kids' church. Have yeah. your kids bring their Bibles to church. That's right. I mean, it's ridiculous. We have a five dollar Bible in there, yeah. and they and you can buy that for them. I told them don't don't have a frap today. Go get you a Bible. <laughs> and so priorities. Priorities, yes. The Bible is the most important book you will That's ever right. read, Amen. ever in your whole life. It's well, the and most when you think about book. people all over the world that aren't even allowed to have this, exactly, and we take it, you know, so flippantly. Like, no, this is life and death in here. Exactly. Like these words are powerful. They are. So what you've got to do, Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That means you keep it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You want to have a good sex, se success in life yeah. and a good success in your marriage and in your family. Right. This is it. Right. You got to do it. You right. got to do it. And it's you might the, say, well, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. You might say, well, I, I, you know, I don't really understand it. We'll get you a translation that you yeah. can understand and then do your PFS every day. This is what's so important. And we have some. If you don't have one, can I have a helper? Yes. If you don't have one, then I want you to get one. You're a couple of days behind, like 10. Today's the 10th. And, but you can catch up. And, and this is, let me just explain explain this to you just a little bit because I have people in growth track that I, I say, okay, you need to read your PFS and they go, what is a PFS? Yeah. You know, we use that term for those of us who have been here a while and they don't have a clue yeah. what it is. We have it in English and we have it in Spanish. Do we have it in German this time? Okay, whatever. We've got it. Yeah. Every, every way that you can get it, it's on your phone. So you read, you read the partnering for success. This is how you succeed. Yeah. And if you don't have it, you need to get it because just like you eat three meals a day or you eat every day, you need to read the Bible every day and get the word of God down in your heart. Yeah. And it doesn't work the way you, you think, like Saturday I can read all week. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way because you'll get bored halfway through. You have to read it every day and it's not hard. And so then you turn it in at the end of the month after you answer the questions and then you're entered in a $500 drawing. What were you going to say? Song of Solomon 2.15 says that it's the little 
little foxes that spoil the vine. And so it's these little things that we don't determine to do daily that will cause the problem. Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, however you say it, 215. It's the little foxes. You know, it was pastors Dean and Kathy's daily time in the word that unlocked their purpose. And we're not saying that whatever you're into right now isn't your calling and in your time with the Lord that, you know, you're going to, you know, end up in Brazil as a missionary or anything like that. But what we're saying is the key to your success is, is like John 15 says, we're abiding there. We're not just visiting. We're not just going through some religious motions. Like we understand y'all, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this book. I wouldn't My either. parents, w- well, because y'all wouldn't be here. Like this book means everything to me. These words are not just words. This is, this is life every single day. And not just when it all hits the fan and not that God's not gracious and merciful and there's not miraculous things that can happen, but why wait until you're facing a life threatening, ne- threatening disease? Why wait until it hits the fan with your kids? When, when you can stay built up and you can avoid some of these things. Um, and so don't think, oh, well, I already have a quiet time. Well, do it better. Yes. Do it better. If you don't, then just start and don't beat yourself up either because, you know, the, the percentage of people who have professed Jesus as Lord and Savior that don't spend time with the word every single day that are in the ministry is astounding. How many ministers do not read their Bible who do not meditate on the word? So don't beat yourself up. Just know that we're going to tell you the truth because we know, listen, success and prosperity is up to you. It's not up to your job. It's not up to the economy. It is up to you. And and once you get started, you will develop an appetite for it. It might be hard on your flesh initially, but then you'll begin to look forward to that time. And one thing that I want to encourage you, create variety in that time too. Like if if it's always in the same exact place forever and ever and ever, amen, um, change it up every once in a while. Change it up every six months. Move to a different chair. It's amazing how you'll get a different perspective. Move to a different room. I know Tommy Barnett, the great, great pastor in um, Arizona, Phoenix, Phoenix. Arizona, um, You know, he gets in his car and he gets a coffee and he has his quiet time in a truck at a certain, in his truck at a certain spot in nature. Like, I mean, we're kind of like, it's not really our vibe around here. Um, Go look at the cactus. Exactly. But, but that's his process. Like that's what he does. So don't lock yourself in, especially if you, if you never grew up with a, a desire to read or, you know, desks and school supplies, you know, really didn't do it for you. Don't, don't. Don't overwhelm yourself with the mechanics. Make it your personality because yes. it's your relationship and with him. And do some girly things like, okay, get a, a partner, accountability partner, and say, okay, I, I got this candle. You get the same candle. So every day when, when you get up, we're going to light the candle. We're go- both going we'll to be having each other. our quiet time yep. together and Heart. not mm-hmm. but separate. And, yep. and we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to read the word. And then we're going to listen. Mm-hmm. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit this Wednesday night is the infilling of the Holy Spirit class and I yes. want you to come so yes. you can know how to pray in the Holy Spirit which is what you need and I need everybody needs it to to speak in tongues and receive the power so you can live with that yeah, man that's right and and so <laughs> So, you know, get your blanket, your yeah. blankie, a pretty blankie, and mm-hmm. a nice new pen and mm-hmm. a new journal. We've got beautiful journals in there. Make it special. Yeah. You can make it girly. Right. Make it girly. Or and, not. Or not, if you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, me and my dog, we have the the quiet time every morning. She's yeah. right by me. And so, you know, do it special right. for you. Right. And then have an accountability party where you say, oh, what did you hear from heaven yeah. today? You yeah. know, and, and, and don't make it so hard. Like, right. this is what the word said. Because right. I'm so grateful that we're reading one Proverbs a month. Because, you know, he was the wisest man that ever yeah. lived. And there's so much in there, yeah. so much in Amen. each verse. So anyway, that's... That's that in a a short amount of explanation, but just do it. Just do it. And if you have questions, then let us know and we can answer those questions and don't be so hard on yourself well I don't have that much time well get up earlier right you know a friend of mine and I used to get up and we used to go to McDonald's I think they opened at 5 30 and while the kids were still asleep we would drive to McDonald's and we would have our quiet time over coffee and and whatever garbage they had to eat at that time but we did that you know we encouraged one another to get up and have some time with each other and then we would go home 
home and pray and be with the Father. Amen. So Proverbs 4, 20 through 27 is a great set of scriptures. It kind of reiterates what, what Joshua 1, 8 says. But I want you to know that just like Pastor Charity says, it says attend to my words or give attention to my words. You don't just read the word every once in a while. Yeah. It's not going to give you life like it should. Mm -hmm. It will give you life every single day. And ask the Holy Spirit, God, give me revelation, revelation on how I can apply this to my life. So down there it says, to know him should be your greatest goal. Yeah. There is no life without that relationship. So true. And you might not feel that way. Do you have that blank on your paper? Anybody? Okay. On the next page. So you might you might think that this is a real chore to read my Bible every day. I used to feel that way. Like, oh gosh, I'm not getting anything out of it. Well, I had a stinking attitude, number one. And number two, I didn't, I didn't really, I was reading King James because that's all I had. And there are good translations that will help you thoroughly understand the word. And if you'll just go in with a, the right attitude, Father, help me. Yeah. Help me to appreciate your word. Show me things. Give me revelation. If then you're, if you're you logical, will. I think that um, the Amplified Classic is is typically the favorite. Like Matt mentioned in prayer, um, noon prayer, he's more logical like Pastor Kathy. He likes Amplified Classic. Um, you know, Pastor Greg has all the translations. So he's very thorough. So if he's going to read, he's going to read it in multiple translations. Um, message is really youthful, New Living, um, The Living Bible. You kind of have to watch out for those a little bit because they'll skew some of the language. So even if you start in the New King James and then go into some of those other ones, the passion is really good. That's um, really emotional. That's for, for emotional yeah. people if you're emotional. Wow. Get the passion. The Passion Bible is for passionate people. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Let's go on. The next next statement says my time. Oh, you know what I was going to say on that? To know him should be your greatest goal. There's no life without that relationship. You can't do a supernatural job in the natural. Right. Marriage is supernatural. God designed that. Yeah. Raising kids in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord is supernatural. Like taking your place in prosperity, in divine healing. You're not going to do that naturally. You have to do that supernaturally. What has sustained pastors Dean and Kathy in their physical bodies for all of these years? Right now they take good vitamins. They eat good things. They don't eat at McDonald's. That was, I was little, too little to remember that. Honestly, um, pastor, we didn't know. Yeah. Um, pastor Dean and Kathy didn't know what we know now, but, but understand that like, that's the word. The word is life and health. And so if you want supernatural health, supernatural prosperity, supernatural kids, supernatural marriage, all that he's provided, you, you're, you can't do it in the natural. You can't do your job successfully in the natural. You're a supernatural being, so you need the, the, the nurture of the word in order to do your job. Exactly. My time with the Father guides and directs my day and ultimately Hallelujah. my life. So you want a good life? Then well, and a good word. life is made up of good days. Exactly. Exactly. And the choice is yours. And you have plenty of time. Yeah, you have plenty of time and God will multiply your time. He will help you to get up. Now, initially it might be a little difficult cuz right. I I've been there done that, you know, I get up and then fall asleep before I even get the Bible open. So, you have to you have to sit in a chair that's not so comfortable and cozy and you got your blanket and it's cold and you're just asleep in no time. No, but you have to do some things that are necessary to get your attention. Well, and I think too, you can get so many really nice coffee makers now that aren't like you know what I mean like you can have like barista coffee like we have this Nespresso thing that Pastor Faith bought Pastor Greg for Christmas this past year maybe the year before y'all I'm telling you that will get your motor running I mean that is like hardcore I was always like drawn to that because did anybody see one fine day like a long long time ago with George Clooney why is that movie so good and why can't you find it anywhere you can't stream it anywhere it's on stars or something who has that no one has that I don't have that like one fine day is so good okay so George Clooney track with me here okay so he's the guy that average do you know who I'm talking about yes okay um so he does the Nespresso. And I always thought that was interesting. Like, why is he so big on that? So Pastor Greg goes to a Nespresso store one time. And he's like, babe, it's for real. Like, it's the best. So anyway, he had wanted one of those. Well, Pastor Faith bought him one. Y'all, that coffee, it takes you somewhere. 
I'm just being honest. Because, <laughs> like, in all the commercials, he's, like, in Italy or somewhere. Like, he's not in America. It's like, the, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, if you squint, it's like everything in my living room and kitchen disappears. And I'm like, I'm somewhere else. Like, that coffee is so good. It, it will, and maybe that's not your favorite. Like, get whatever Alani. is your favorite. Right. If you want to, whatever. whatever it is, like get up in the morning and get excited. Like if you have to go, like Tommy Barnett goes and gets a coffee, you have to go and do that. Like just get up and get going. Be a joy to be in his presence. Like don't, don't like dread into his presence. Like go with joy and have a little coffee. I mean that, those, those, those are good. I'll tell you. And you it's not what, that expensive. You know what will also help when you take a shower? You know, you like the hot water. It feels so good. And then right before you get out, turn it to ice cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really healthy yeah. for you, too. It's really healthy for you, and it will get every nerve in your body awake. Yes. And then you're, okay. <laughs> you're very attentive to you're the Holy Ghost. Ready to go. Okay, well, we can't, I could talk about that for a long time, but I'll give you some time to well, go to I think it, uh, Well, I think it's important. Read, pray in the Holy Spirit, which kind of brings us into number two, um, because not having a quiet time, obviously, you've got no strength. Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord. Right. Who is the Lord? The Lord is his word. He's his word. So you can't be strong without the word. So it starts there, but it's word and spirit. And so what happens, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. Number two is religion or having a form of godliness. So it's not just the word. The word's important, but it's not just the word. It's the word and the spirit. And so in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, um, Paul said, know this in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors and headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. So they'll have a form of godliness, which means you can have a relationship with the word. And I believe Pastor Greg talked about it, you know, people that have memorized scripture or, or maybe it was Karina, people have memorized scripture. They know what the Bible says, but it's not real to them. That it's was not me. alive. That was me. Yeah, it's not alive on the inside of them. And so, so here's the thing. If you feel overwhelmed, you're yielding to religion. And that's such a common phrase. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just overwhelmed. If you feel overwhelmed, that's religion. You're being religious. And don't say that. Don't say that because your kids come to kids church and they say, I'm overwhelmed. You're four, (laughs) five. How can you be overwhelmed? Right. In John, in John 4, 1 through 24, a beautiful picture of Jesus with a woman. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees has heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but it was actually his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. He needed to go through Samaria, so he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, he sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus Jesus said to her, can you give me a drink? For his disciples had gone into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew are asking me a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that says this to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, and I would underline or circle this phrase, will never thirst. Hallelujah. Never thirst. Glory there is a place in him, which is in the spirit where you do not run dry. You are like the energizer bunny. You keep going and going and going and going. There's no obstacle. There's no challenge. You yield to that anointing, to his presence. Um, The water that I give shall give him excuse me, but the, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain, a fountain. What do fountains do? They keep going and going yes. and going and going and going and going and going, springing up into everlasting life. The everlasting life that you received in salvation isn't just for heaven. You can draw on that right now. Yes, what did amen. Jesus say? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Matthew 6, 10, on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven on earth now. So everlasting life now. I operate in that how? By the word 
and by the Holy Ghost. The woman answered and said, I don't have any husband. Jesus said, you facts, you don't. You actually have had five, and the one who you now have is not your husband. The woman said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Really? Um, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you say, and you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. And Jesus said, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers, underline that phrase, circle that, true worshipers, those in true relationship relationship with him do so how in spirit and in truth so it's both you have to know the word and, and what's so unfortunate is in the body of Christ right now, what we see, and we're not a part of that company, thank God, but there are those who, who, who are all spirit and things just get weird, yeah, right? Because right. they have no foundation in the truth. And so they got a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit and things get just per- perverted in, in, in the spirit world or those that are all word with no spirit. And what happens? It's dry. dry. It's brittle. There's no joy. There's no peace. It's all intellectual. There's no real action. There's no real action. Activity. Um, and so it's worship in spirit and in truth for the father is seeking those to, who worship him. God is spirit and those who worship it must do so in spirit and in truth. So here's your blank. There is a place in him where you never run dry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, John seven thirty eight, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said out of his heart, his innermost being, his core will flow rivers, not of dry, stagnant. Have you ever ordered a tea at a restaurant and you're like, this was yesterday's. Yeah. Yes. You could tell it was cloudy. Gagamagat. It was cloudy. Well, if we demand our tea to be fresh, do you know what I'm saying? You don't drink old coffee. You don't it, like, let your life be fresh. Not even just for your spouse or for your kids, but just for your own self, for your own self. Well, how's that going to happen by the Holy spirit in him? There is a flow yes. and you can tell when someone's in a flow. Yes. Romans 14, 17, there's peace, there's joy, there's confidence. The Bible says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In him, there is a river. That's why I like that song. Like there's a river flowing out of me. Like there's a flow of anointing, whatever it is. And we're not surrounded by rivers. So I, I pulled up this video for us to look at just because it's so calm and it's so peaceful. Um, and again, we are not going to be able to run out this afternoon to a river. And so they're going to play this video. It's awesome. You're going to like it. Just constant, steady, peaceful flow. Flow. You know, it's fear that gets you panicked, that gets you in anxiety, and then ultimately you just shut down. You know, I need a nap. And it's like, we can't nap all the time. Like, what is that to do? <laughs> Don't be lazy. The word is to your thoughts what the Holy Spirit is to your emotions. So you need the word to renew your mind. And then the Holy Spirit like comes alongside that word. And once it becomes like makes it alive on the inside of you, like what good is it if someone's like this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but they shall meditate and make it very successful and prosperous. God, I thank you today that because I meditate on your word, it's like, like that person's not prosperous. That person's not success, successful. You read that and then the Holy Spirit ministers that to you and then you begin to see yourself. Father, I so thank you that I'm in you and that you're in me yes, and together yes. like you're giving me the knowledge of witty ideas and inventions and, and there's like a lifting, right? John 16. Sing that song. I come alive in the river. Yes, yes, amen, amen. I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, underline these words as I read them, he will guide you. So he takes the truth and he shows you how to apply it. It's not enough that you just have it memorized. It has to be applied to your life. That's when it turns into wisdom. And he's the spirit of wisdom. So he guides you. He doesn't speak on his own authority, but whatever he, he hears, he will speak. You can underline this phrase. He will tell you things to come. Hallelujah. There's a place in him where you never are caught off guard. He will glorify me. He will take what is mine and give it to you. If we're not accessing everything that God's provided, it's not just knowing it. 
you. Okay, you can know all day long that your bank card has funds, but if you don't know the PIN number, you're not getting anything. Well, the PIN number represents that flow of the Holy Ghost. That's You need the code. Because what works for your prosperity like three years ago isn't may not work today. Right. And what worked for like raising me wasn't what was going to work for raising faith. And yeah. even it, they're, they're a different, they're a year older now and different challenges, different things are going on in their hormones. So you can't just phone it in and like be on like autopilot. Um, he'll show you things to come. He'll, he'll dic- take what is mine and give it to you. All things the father has are mine. Therefore I said, he will take of mine and give it to you. And then in John 14, some other things that the Holy spirit does, um, he will be your helper. You could underline that phrase. He will give you a helper. You know, when you're just like, I, I'm just, I'm just feel like I'm helping everyone. I'm just helping everyone. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not that helpful. And like, if you're going to say that everybody around you better be looking like their best. Okay. Because don't be like flexing on how helpful you are when your daughter's hair looks ratchet, you know, their homework isn't done. They don't have their Bible and you're flexing on how hard you're working. Like, no, don't do that. You're being a martyr. You're being a victim. But if you are struggling to get everything done that needs to be done, like the Holy Spirit will help you help them. And so a woman that's full of the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, even singing songs in the spirit, like there's going to be a flow supernaturally. And that's what will be said of us this year. Surely the Lord is with us. You know, we did some things different, even in our preparations for this conference. We normally suspend late night, but we knew in our heart not to do that. Like a young girl got saved on Wednesday night. Like we're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to not have a service for some decorations because that's what it boils down to. It gives everybody more time to set up. And so Thursday afternoon, y'all, it's not looking good. Like it's not looking good. And, and literally I just prayed cause we're studying, we're preparing. I wasn't a part of the setup team, obviously if we're on ministry team and I just prayed and literally uh, multiple staff members said it was like the sun stood still, like the clock stood still and the time was, was that's what the Holy ghost can do for you. He can make things that should take eight hours, be compressed down to three and exactly. you have time to sit and play mall madness or uno or whatever. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will multiply your time. He will. So it's, he's oh, it's like, you've got to seek first the kingdom. You've got yeah. to say, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me. What is he? He's your helper and he right. will help you. But if you never ask him, he's not going to force his will on you. Right. He's not going to force his help. He's standing right. there waiting for you to say, help me, Holy Spirit. Right. Multiply my time. There were many people praying for this thing to get all done because it wasn't done and it didn't look like it was going to get done. By it didn't look like a castle. No, it didn't. It looked like a train wreck. Because you prayed and you believed. They were like the Energizer Bunny around here. Everything was done and they had time to spare. They had time to spare. Hallelujah. And so when you put him first, even in just making a decision as a staff, hey, we're not going to compromise the preaching, the teaching of the word for the decorations. We're going to have our service and, right. and, and things happen supernaturally. I grew up hearing my mom say that. Help me, Holy Spirit. You have not because you ask not. And so that's pretty much the main thing um, in um, John 14, 15 through 18. Uh, but maybe circle this word too. I will not leave you as orphans. You know, you may be sitting in here. Well, I didn't grow up with a mom like that. You know, I'm pioneering this in my family. You may... Have, have moms and dads that have already gone to be with the Lord and you feel very vulnerable. You feel like without help, like I used to call my mom. I used to be able to call my mom. Well, most of you have pastor Kathy's number, which, you know, as the church continues to grow, it's not that everybody's going to, but don't act like you don't have natural resources here because you do. But even then y'all, the Holy spirit will minister that to you. He can do what your mom could never do for you. He could do right. what your dad could never do for you. So you're not like, oh, I'm just by myself. I'm you're just not alone. You're not alone. You're not. He'll minister family to you. He'll minister um, acceptance to you. Um, that make that that being in the beloved so real to you. And then um, John 14, 25 through 28, just a couple of things highlight. We already did or underlined. He's the helper in verse 26. It goes on to say, he's your teacher. You can circle that. He will teach you all things. Well, I just don't know. I just don't know. He'll start to show you one step at a time. Well, I just can't hear his voice yet. Maybe you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but you don't know how to hear his voice. Come to the class on Wednesday night. We'll teach you how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, uh, Romans 8, I believe 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right. That's your right. Right. If you're a child of God, you have a right to be able to hear his voice. So don't be like, well, it's just not for me. You know, religion has said that. No, it's for you. And know that it's not an audible voice. 
Right. It's, no, it's, that he's not going to say charity. Right. No, it comes from within. It's yes. an unction mm-hmm. on the inside. And you know when it's him. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, or Jesus said it himself. He said, you hear my voice. Yes. You're my sheep. The voice yes. of a stranger, you will not follow. So you just press into him and say, yes, Talk to me. Well, Help me. Show don't me what to do. That. Like, don't say, I just don't know. I just don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. I'm just so confused. I'm just so confused. Don't say that. Yeah. Like, say, Father, I thank you that I hear your voice. I thank you that I'm your sheep and I hear your voice and I'm led by you. And if someone asks you, well, what are you going to do about that? You know, the Holy Spirit is revealing that to me even now. Even yes. now. Like, this yes. is a faith relationship. Right. Everything we do in him has to be done in faith. Um, okay. In verse 26, also circle, y'all, when it says, he'll bring to your remembrance all the things that I've said to you. You know, he'll cause all these things to start fitting together. Um, My peace, he'll give you, you know, when you're just troubled all the time, mental disorders, just pray in the Holy Spirit. Nothing will flip the atmosphere of your emotions faster than prayer in the Holy Spirit. You know, people try to logically, they, they like want to break down all their emotions. Well, why am I feeling this way? When did this feeling start? Is this because I don't have a dad? Is this because I've been um, cheated on? Is it, you know, you want to, is this because of this? You want to, you want to like basically massage all of your feelings and figure them out and get to the bottom of them and then talk about them with other people. What's the point of of all of that? Just pray in the Holy Ghost and the atmosphere will change. It will flip. Um, Let your heart not be troubled. Don't be afraid. So he ministers strength to you. Um, As you've heard me say, I'm going away and coming back to you. Um, And so he's the one that takes everything that God has done. I wrote it this way in my notes, and I don't think that you have this statement, but uh, just listen, without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the power and the authority of the word won't be personal. You got to have the Holy Spirit. The way he leads me into prosperity isn't the same way he's led pastors Jean and Kathy into prosperity. The way that he's anointed Candace to raise her kids is not going to be the same as he's anointed Linda to raise her kids. Those kids are different. So this has to be personal. Otherwise, you come to church, you hear, train your kids in the admonition of the Lord. When they're old, they won't depart. And then you leave and you can get brittle. You can get bitter. You can get frustrated. You can start getting offended because, well, it's easy for them. They don't have kids like mine. Well, no, the Holy Spirit would have been right there to take the truth of the word of God and make it just as real in your life right. as the next person's and it won't be active. You know, so many believers, you can tell they don't have a relationship with the Holy spirit because they're not moving. They're not doing anything. You shouldn't be focused on the same things this year that you were focused on last year. Like he's moving you forward into the more, always more, always more. Say that after me. There's more. There's more. And, and the Holy spirit wants to lead. You can see any churches that don't yield to the fire of the Holy spirit. What are they doing? They're doing the same things. They're doing the same things. There's no life. And like you said it, not me. They're dying. No young people. Because he keeps things active and he keeps things personal in your life. Number three, and we'll do this one and then we'll, we'll, do you want to do three and four and then take a rest for a minute? Do we have time for a rest? I mean, this is only an hour and a half. This is as long as we want it to be. Surely you can hold your bladder. Okay. Isolation. Number three. This is such a big one. Nothing zaps strength faster than, than trying to be the hero of your own life. Nothing zaps your strength faster than trying to be the hero of your own life. I was having a conversation with one of our staff members the other day. Just because you have to be the one where the buck stops at doesn't mean like you're doing it all. Just because you're accountable for it to all be done doesn't mean you have to do it all. You can't do it all. And in and of yourself, without the word, without the Holy Ghost, and without the gifts and the body, you can't do it by yourself. So women who are isolated will have no strength. And they get weird. Proverbs 18.1, facts. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. So when you look at these things, you realize, okay, if I'm going to be strong in him, I'm going to have to have a word. I'm going to have to have the spirit. I'm going to have to have relationships. And every relationship doesn't have to be this deeply meaningful thing. You know, you were made for community. You need to have some people that you can talk with. They're, they're not going to be exactly like you. They're not going to see see things the same exact way that you do. But you need that community. You need to laugh. You need to realize, hey, I'm not the only one that's raising kids. I'm not the only, because you just get in your head like you're the only one. And instead of enjoying your life, you're just like attacking your life until you absolutely, you know, can't anymore and you blow up and it's not a good situation. Where there's no counsel, people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. 
their safety. And in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, in my Bible, these verses are actually called the value of a friend. We hear them a lot speaking about marriage, but he's not specifically talking about marriage. He's talking about friendship. Right. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. And pride will just, you know, if your security is in your kid's performance, the very moment that you need somebody to say, hey, I just want to call you, tell you I wanted to kill my daughter this week, but I didn't. And, um, you know, like, don't like awkwardly laugh. Like this is a real thing. Like y'all have thought it like you wouldn't actually do it, but you're like mad. You know what I mean? But you don't want to tell anybody and be vulnerable because then you're like, well, what are they going to think? Then they're going to think that I'm not a good mom. They already know. They already know, yo, they saw your daughter. They see your son. Your kids are friends with their kids. Like what, what are, who are we actually hiding from? Right? Teenagers need help. Kids need help. Like we're all growing here, but you don't want to say anything. So you just take it on yourself and then you just have you have isolated people have a look like isolated women have a look do you know what I mean it's like a it's like a mad look (laughs) but woe to him who is alone when he falls woe to you no one's there to help you you know and then you're upset because you feel like you have nobody well nobody knows to be around you because you've been so prideful you've been so isolated If two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one be worn alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So obviously, when you've got the word and the Holy Ghost and your church connection in the middle of that friendship, it's a very powerful thing. Um, But if you're isolated, you're you're not going to be strong. Nothing zaps strength faster than trying to be the hero of your own life. And what you need to do is, if you don't have a friend, pray and ask God to give you a friend. Right. I mean, he's faithful. Right. He will give you a friend who that you can talk to, who that you can fellowship with, who you can laugh with, Mm -hmm. who you can share ideas with. It's a good thing to have a friend. Amen. Can't have too many because, you know, we only have so much time. Right. You don't have time for some, for, for very many, but, but two, don't put unrealistic expectations. You know, people have done that before. Like, you know, I want a friend who's this and this and this and this and this. And it's like, that's not like an actual person. (laughs) Dream, you know, dream, like maybe dream. have a friend that you connect with in one way about this, but then in another way about this. Oh, yeah. I had a friend who, I mean, she was, she was different. And, um, <laughs> but she was very creative. And so, you know, in my, my upbringing, I was kind of lacking in that. And so I would call her over there. I didn't, I didn't talk to her about her kids because they were a mess. I didn't talk to her about any other thing but, you know, make my birthday party for my girls happy. Make it fun. Do all kinds of things. And she did. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the way it works. You get another friend who can kind of is, is more... Deeper, you would Deeper, pray with. Mm-hmm. Yes, that I would pray with, and you know, we would have, we would go and eat breakfast together, and we would have fellowship over the word. And I wouldn't have fellowship with that one at all. You know, that was just out of the question. But we, we were. I mean, she was saved. Praise God. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, find some friends. Find a friend at least that you can talk to. We were created for fellowship. Yeah. That's why we were created to begin with, because God wanted somebody to share His love with. Yeah. And you can get ideas and some things. Uh, from other people just to bounce off of them like right. what do you what did you do how did you do that how did you make that cake so good mine flopped you know <laughs> right well I think that's one of my favorite things about you mom is you were always so humble and you like your security wasn't tied to those kinds of things like you know and it's unrealistic like if you think that you're going to be you know, know it all and do it all and be great at it all. That's unrealistic. And, and it, and it is prideful. And, and two, Nehemiah 8, 10 says the joy of the Lord is your strength and you need other people. You know, we get so like, like, and that's why I said it last night, like nobody cares. Like you, you see your relational connections as, you know, based on your posts and somebody liking your picture and like, right. come on, man. Like, come on with that. Like we are not 11 and 12. Like we are grown and like, that's how we connect. That's how, you know, we let our world know what's going on as we took a little cute picture with our spouse at the conference and we're going to post that. No, that's not a friendship. That's not, that's not, that's not relationship. And our, our house was so full of joy. It was so full of joy. People were at our house all the time. 
there was always laughter and it wasn't like having Bible studies like th those were there too but I mean my mom and dad they laughed with their friends a lot and that is so healthy for your kids to see not long ago we had some friends over and you know when your kids get older they like to find out what you're doing and where you are and, <laughs> and what you're eating that's faith yo that is pastor oh faith my gosh. I do not think about them I do not I'm being honest like oh, let them okay, live good. their life let them live so their anyway life. it was it's 11 o'clock you know faith calls what are you doing well we're, we're playing cards we're having a, a good good time one o'clock she calls what are you doing <laughs> Two o'clock, she calls. Are y'all still up? Like, like, are you my mother? Yes, we are up. Am I too old to be up at two o'clock? <laughs> it's hilarious. Go ahead. Amen. But your phone can't be your friend. <laughs> right. So like, you good. have to have a real person. <laughs> A real person. So many people, this is their life. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. It's right. totally ridiculous. Right. Guys, no one cares. Even if they give you a little thumbs up or a like, I don't even know how you do it. Like, you get a like. Like, they don't like it. Yeah. It's so stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is so fake. S-T-U-P-I-D. Where are we? Number four, you're up. Oh, I'm up. Okay. So, this is kind of what we've been talking about, being a doer of the word. Yeah. You can't be disobedient to the word of God. And ladies who have kids, I just want to tell you, when you're disobedient to God and you expect your kids to be obedient to you, you're reaping what you sowed. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So, you know, when you know the word, you got to be a doer of it. Just yeah. like just like James 1, 22 through 26 says, be a doer of the word. Now, you don't know Genesis to maps. None of us do. Yeah. But we're learning. That's why we come to church. That's why we read yeah. our Bible. So we can grow in the things of God. And once once you find it in scripture. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Um, what do I say here? Uh, the word of God is the most important book you will ever read and must be applied to your life. That's what I talked about the first night. Okay, you have knowledge, but you have to have understanding. Right. Joshua 1 8, you have to meditate on the word. You have to see yourself. You have to see your kids, good kids, instead mm -hmm. of seeing them the way they are. Right. You imagine them. That's what God did when he created the earth. He imagined the sun and he imagined it and then he spoke it out of his mouth. Yeah. So you imagine yourself as, as whatever it is, your kids are good, your, your husband is a good husband. He comes in right. after work and he helps me. You know, I imagine that and I believe that and I'm kind and sweet to him instead of griping and complaining and nagging all the time. Right. But that's what the word says. The the word says to love your husband, to respect your husband. So you, you understand that it's application of the word. You got to be a doer of what you hear. Right. And the Holy Spirit, that's why it's word and spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you how to apply it to your life because applying it to your husband is different than my husband. Right. My husband likes to load the dishwasher. Okay, fine. If you tell your husband to load the dishwasher, he'll probably tell you to take a hike, <laughs> you know, right. But, he likes to do that. So, right. you know, every it, couple yeah. is different, but right. you do what the word of God says. Well, and the thing about it is, I think what I've seen over the years, you know, being a part of mom and dad's ministry and even being kids, so many people, and you just write down this verse, Galatians 3, um, 1 through 3, basically Paul's like, you foolish Galatians, who has deceived you that you should not obey the truth? Because you basically, in verse 3, you started in the spirit and now you're going back to the flesh. Guys, we we have to just keep going. You know, I think sometimes like you start tithing, you start giving, you start being faithful to church and you're like, we're doing this thing. And then something comes up, there's a death in the family or, you know, your house floods or, you know, circumstances come up or just you, you get weary. You think nothing's really changing. And now I've got even more on my calendar than I used to have on my calendar. I was barely cooking and keeping up with the laundry before we decided to take deep. And now I'm, and, and so you just get started, but you have to stick with this. Like these results don't happen over. Overnight. Like, I don't even know who was telling me it wasn't like, you know, like real and, you know, revelation in my own life. But I think if you're working out like in your arms, I think it takes like three months maybe before you even start to see any change like in wow. your arms. That's, That's a long time. That. Like these are natural things, but it's like you start and then you just get overwhelmed. Like I'm not going to be able to do it. Like who cares? Like what has to like take the back burner? Like you want this to be the priority. You want right. this to be the main thing. So 
just don't start and think, well, you know, we didn't really see any change. Well, it doesn't happen overnight. A farmer plants the seed. They're faithful over that seed. They continue in that seed. It, It does take time. And depending on the mess that you got yourself in, you know, it might take a little bit longer to see yourself out on the other side of those things. You have to be consistent. You You have have to to be be consistent. consistent. The doers are blessed and they will see the manifestation of the promises of God. But it's through faith and patience you inherit the promise. So don't be impatient. Say, I, I, I tithed 25 cents. I should have gotten $25 by Friday. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You have to keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing the word in your heart and speaking it out of your mouth and it will manifest in your life. You just have to believe God and don't right. grow weary and well doing. Right. Galatians 6 9. Don't, you know, people quit and then, you know, God can't do anything about that. If you quit, like what, what did he tell the rich young ruler? Hey, this is your next step. Yeah. Um, and you can just write it down. It's not in your notes. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. You know, he gave him his next step. And that's the thing in the, in the family of God, there's always more steps. You know, people just get comfortable. Well, we have a good job. We do our vacations. You know, we're raising our kids. We get to the little quinceanera and all those things. It's like, there's more to life than that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But there's always more. So um, he'll give you that next step. But what did the rich young ruler do? And it's, um, you can just write it, Mark 10, um, about verse 17 through 30, the whole, the whole story. But he gave him his next step. He didn't do it. He completely walked away. Man, you only had one thing left to do to move forward into maturity you you threw it all away it's like you were right there but then you just threw it all away you know the harvest was there and you let your faith be shipwrecked because you went back and now you just started drinking again you started doing this and then you're getting a divorce and now you got all these weird pictures on your instagram and yeah it's, and then what your life doing? is miserable exactly there's no yeah. life there there's no there's life no in life that. there there's life in the word right there's life in the word right that's why we are a covenant community we stick together. We stick together with the covering of the word of God. We do what the word says, not what man's opinion is, right. what God says, because right. he is always right. We got to be a doer of the word and everybody individually has to do that. Right. You have to determine I'm going to do the word. Yes, I'm going to do the word. I'm not going to falter. I'm not going to pull back. Just like Jesus, when he lost his church, he turned to his disciples. He said, are you, you gonna going lead to? Too? Yeah. And they said, no, you have the words of life. This is the word of life. Hallelujah. And it will be. Well, and you have that life. verse, Romans 6 23, the wages of sin is death. Yeah. When you don't do what you know to do, and that's not like all the sins that we think are sins. That's like any step that you know the Lord told you to take that you don't take, that's sin. And you're gonna you're gonna struggle. There's you're gonna whatever grace you had in that season will be gone. Like as a church, we realize, okay, if we don't keep moving forward, the things that used to be so easy are now getting harder and harder. Why? Because the grace is done with that. that. That season's over. Now a new person's to move into that. I'm to be in a new season. And if you don't keep in step with him, you you, you lose the, the grace and the anointing in what you're called to do. Number Feelings. five, we're tracking with the guys. They are, so um, they're kind of a little bit behind just like we are. Second Corinthians five, seven, we walk by faith and not by sight. Feelings have nothing to do with faith. I love that because it's like, I don't have to feel it to be in faith. I don't have to feel it to be in faith. We should spend less time thinking and feeling and more time meditating and praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Meditating is different than thinking. Meditating is replacing your thoughts with God's words. Exactly. Stop thinking your thoughts and instead replace them with God's thoughts. That's why that time in the word is so important in the morning because you can literally give him all of your thoughts. Like write down everything that's on your mind. That's why Proverbs 31 even says she orders her day like for all of his all of her servants first thing so that you can be free. Like you've communicated everything that you need to communicate. And so now you're free, but you have to do that with the father. Like if you wake up and you're worried about your finances, you're worried about this and that and that you're, you've got this lingering thought of condemnation or shame from something you did or didn't do yesterday. You get that all out and you say, father, I present all my thoughts to you. Now your word says that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your word says that when I am diligent, I am rich. Your word says that everything I put my hands to prospers. And then you think those thoughts all day, which is meditating on the word which will actually produce prosperity instead of just saying, I just have a lot on my mind. We'll get it off. 
It's like you're a victim to your own head. You're a victim to your own feelings. And guess what? You will not have the strength to fulfill God's plan for your life. You won't have the strength to stay married. You won't have the strength to raise your kids in the admonition of the Lord. It will not happen. So meditating is replacing your thoughts with God thoughts. And then throughout the day, when a bad thought comes, because you're thinking, you're feeling, and then you're choosing. So when you start realizing I made a bad choice at lunch, uh, you know, I will, because I felt wrong. Like I was, I was upset with myself, you know, uh, on Wednesday night. Um, after our youth service, you know, it was, it was pretty intense. And, you know, sometimes you just don't feel it. Sometimes you feel like, oh, that just soared into the spiritual bliss of young youth power. And then other times you're like, you know what? (laughs) So I went into the little room and I said, Heather, what do we got around here? That's sweet. So she starts sending me pictures and I'm like, what, what is it? What is this? What is this crap? I don't want any of that. I was like, the only thing I could think that would turn my night around, and I only had a few minutes, was because I was gonna be in late night. I was like, just go get me a Frosty. Only a mini, only a mini, like a little mini Frosty. Because they have those, if y'all haven't heard that. That's perfect, it's perfect size. So I sat there and I was like, you're gonna, I knew, I was talking to myself as I was eating it. I was like, you're gonna regret this. Like, you don't need to eat this. Like, you're not eating this in joy, it's nobody's birthday party. You're not at a birthday party right now. Nobody's birthday party. You're sitting here, yo. I had my sister come in there just to be with me in my sin and just sat there on the couch (laughs) as I ate that ice cream. And feelings. I made a wrong choice because I was upset. Like I was just like Nothing that, like whatever feelings. that was, I don't know what that was. That, I mean, you give it your all and it's like, it's still not enough. Never enough. Never, never. That's, that's kind of how you feel. And your feelings lie to you. Like we don't, well, you're walking by sight. Feelings like you are fickle. Right. And you're walking by sight. They're tied to sight. Instead of just acknowledging, okay, father, I sow the incorruptible seed of the word of God. I've done my part. It's your job to do the rest of it. You're going to eat some ice cream and feel better. No, now you're going to feel worse. Right. So you start working in reverse. You should have taken that thought captive immediately. But if you'll do it first thing in the morning, then you start with a clean slate because no one's trying to drag yesterday or you've got the day started wrong already and you haven't even seen anybody. You haven't even talked to anybody yet. But then throughout the day, you train yourself. Okay, I'm feeling wrong. I'm acting wrong right now. What am I actually thinking? What does the word say? Replace that thought. Delete that thought. Instead of being like, well, why am I thinking that thought? Well, I'm thinking that because my dad was never there for me. And I'm thinking that because my husband, it's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I want to beat my head against the wall until it bleeds. Like, like just replace the thought well, with that's what, what the, the word Bible says. says. Second Corinthians 10, five says, cast down those thoughts and imagination. Yeah. So the way you cast them down, cause they'll keep coming. They'll keep bombarding you and bombarding you. You speak it out of your mouth. You say, no, no, I have whatever it is, or I'm strong, yes. or I, I preach that sermon. I preach my heart out yes. and that seed fell on good ground and those kids are going to be changed and their lives are going to be forever uh, serving God. You know, you have right. to speak it out of your mouth. You have to right. say what the word of God says. Well, and praying in the Holy Spirit is a really fast, like, and that's your blank, replacing your emotions with peace and joy. Like when you start feeling bad, if you, you know, you need a minute to reset mentally, just start praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, the atmosphere changes immediately. Had I gone in there and just started praying in the Holy Ghost, but I didn't, I was just lazy. I was just like, you know, just going to like have a little pity party in there about how, you know, in your mind, you had an expectation that you would have delivered it better. Whatever the case is, it's all feelings. So the word of God and the Holy Holy Spirit, like these are active relationships. And look what God did for us in the realm of our emotions in redemption. In Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Well, in the actual Hebrew, that word sorrows, um, it pertains to physical and emotional. So when he took your sorrows, that wasn't just pain and sickness and disease. That, that pertains to your emotions as well. So Jesus took all mental disturbance and all emotional disorders. So don't talk about that. And, and ladies, many of you, you, you know these things. You're seasoned believers. But help us be a healthy body by ministering this to newer believers. Right. That are anxious and that are troubled and that are fearful. No, baby, Jesus bore that for you. He put a crown of thorns on your exactly. head. Be bold to lay your hands on them and say, Spirit of God, minister your redemptive life to them. Peace. Don't Don't use yes. your emotions. Some women use their emotions. You know, well, my wife's upset. We're going to take her out of town for a couple of days. Listen, there's not enough Gucci. There's not enough. And like, and you can try, listen, 
listen, we can try. We can try to buy it all and do it all. And you're still mad. You're st that's not going to get, have those things because Jesus paid for you to have an abundant life. Not then every time you look at that bag, you remember peace is prosperity. Like he's given you this peace. So don't buy into that. you they'll put you on those meds. They'll put your kids on those meds. No, right. no, 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 no. The, the, the crown of thorns on his head. And, and when, when you feel like you're going crazy, we've all felt like that. I feel, I've told Greg that before. I remember when we were renovating this building, you know, there were times where I just felt such tremendous pressure and I would look you at him and I'd be did. like, I feel <laughs> like I am going crazy right now, but you're not, you're not going crazy. That's a thought of the enemy to destroy your peace, to destroy your joy, to get you out of the plane of God, take authority over it and say, no, those, that crown of thorns that Jesus put on his head, that guarantees my peace. The other blank there is your quiet prosperity, peace, you're quiet. Psalms 46, 10, it's earlier in your notes. We didn't read it. Be still and know right. that I am God. Yes. John 14, 27, his peace, I leave with you. His peace means his mental and emotional stability. You know, we have those bracelets. What would Jesus do? Well, what would Jesus feel? Jesus wouldn't feel this right now. Jesus wouldn't think this right now. So I'm not going to feel it and I'm not going to think about it. Psalms 27, five for in a time of trouble, he hides me in his pavilion. He's our hiding place in Psalms 32, seven immature Christians, just like babies live their lives based on what they feel. Well, I just feel like a failure. Okay. Well, stop making mistakes, build yourself up in the word, grow, learn, watch a YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? Like immature Christians, just like babies, right? They cry, they scream, right? Everything's about how they feel. I feel hungry. I feel like colic. Is that what it's called? Yes. I feel all these things. Like mature believers, mature like believers realize that feelings are not <laughs> indicators. <laughs> Listen, I got nothing to hide. I, that frosty was good. Now, I, I felt it on Thursday. I had to write that down in my quiet time journal. Like, Lord, that was wrong, right? You, th that was wrong. That was, uh, that was not, I was not hungry. I ate that emotionally. Mature believers realize that feelings are not indicators of the quality of their life, but the quality of their thinking and change them if they are wrong and out of control. Like you have to be mature enough. It's not your husband's fault. You can't buy, again, you buy something new because you like it, because you enjoy it, because of the blessing, but not to make you feel better. You re redo in the house. Now you need a new car. Now you need to move. Hobbs is your problem. Listen, yo, Hobbs is not your problem. That's right. Hobbs is great. Hobbs is not your problem. Your job is not your problem. Your boss is not your problem. You're immature. Just call a spade a spade. You're and your problem. Exactly. Um, Jesus said in this world, you're going to have pressure, but what, what do we say around here? I'm anointed for problems. That's what our staff confesses. You're anointed to solve problems yes. by the word and the spirit. When the pressures of life come, you will turn your attention. Stop focusing on the problem, but turn your attention to your answer. My God is greater. All I see is victory in every situation. He's the greater one in me and he's leading me out. It doesn't say though I walk in or I live in the valley of the shadow of death. No, I'm going through that. I'm going right through it. I go through the storm to the other side. I go through the valley of the shadow of death. No one's camping out there. Right. I know exactly what to do and how to do it. The world's peace is governed entirely by what's going on around us. But God's peace is governed entirely by what's going on in us. That's why you put what needs to be put in first thing in the morning with your Nespresso and let's go. Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All of these um, verses are so good concerning the fruit, fruit of the spirit on the inside of us, but just fill it in at the bottom. You can read it on your own time. Feelings is flesh. So you could actually make that verse say, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of your feelings. Those your desires that pull you away from your focus. And guys, again, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Some of you may be hearing some of these truths for the first time, and I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to see the progress. Some of you may have heard these over and over, but if you were honest with yourself, you've let them slip. You've been lazy. You've been sloppy with these things, and you can see the results of it in your life. A man without self-control is as defenseless as a city with broken down walls. Proverbs 31, 25. She's a woman of strength and dignity with no fear of old age. She always faces, I like the message Bible of that verse. She always faces tomorrow with a smile. Yes. 
always face this tomorrow with a smile. No mental disorder. You know, it's just like sixth grade has just been so hard on the kids. And, you know, I can't wait till they're 18. You got how many years left? And then how many kids? Like, this, your life sucks. And you, you're making it that way. Like, stop making it that way. Great is my peace. Undisturbed is my composure. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. I have a sound mind. I don't have a spirit of fear. I walk after the spirit. How does God feel about this? He feels good. The Bible says he sits in the heavens and laughs. So I'm not going to be upset. Amen. Number six. Um, so many people take on an event. They get offended at certain things. And I'm telling you, we got to grow up. we got to yeah. grow up in these last days. And you can't be offended. You can't walk around with a chip on your shoulder. You can't, you know, your husband can't say anything to you. And especially, ladies, you know, I'm telling you, you can't have a week or two weeks a month that you're a bear, that everything he does or everything he says offends you. Get over that. I don't think Sarah had those issues. You know, she took control of her emotions. She took control of herself. And even those of you who are going through menopause, you know, how many years are you going to be a bear? I mean, that's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. You got to take authority over that. Okay. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 21 through 22 says, do not take to heart all the things that people say. That's right. Amen. You just lo- don't you keep, just, don't hold on to it. Yeah. You just have to let it go. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble, stumble or nothing offends me. That needs to be your attitude. You, you can't say anything that'll offend me. I'm a Offended less, or however right. you say it. Unoffendable. Uh, unoffendable. Unoffendable. Yes, that's exactly yep. right. Praise God. And well, and what Pastor Dean says, you don't have any feel. I don't have any feelings don't that you it. can hurt. And you, can, I'm and all you out. can't assume an offense. Yeah. That doesn't work either. Right. That doesn't work. God's going to take care of you. He's Amen. your vindicator. He's going to take care of that's you. That's right. So discipline yourself to let it go. First Peter two twenty three says Jesus who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. Don't return evil for evil. Don't return offense, ugly words. You know, just let it go. Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God as your children. Okay? Number seven, dwelling on the past. This is ridiculous, ladies. Yeah. Well, like, we got to forget those things that are past. Philippians three thirteen through 14. Paul said this, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Just let it go. Let it go. Micah seven ten talks about that also. Uh, Proverbs 13, uh, 19, 11. Smart people know how to hold their tongue. Their yeah. grandeur is to forgive and forget. That's what you got to do. Amen. You got to forgive and forget. And I'm telling you, so many couples, when they get in a discussion, they start bringing up the past, digging up the past. Yeah. Well, you did this 10 years ago, or you had an affair, or whatever. Right. What, no. Whatever it is, you got to let that That's go. Right. And you have to settle that on the inside of you. God takes your sin and removes it as far as the East is from right. the West. He remembers it no more, and you don't need to remember it. Yeah. So you need to let it go. These these other scriptures will really help you. Um, First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, I said this the other night, but it is it just goes off on the inside of the, me because when you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse. That means remove it. That means erase, erase as if it had never happened. That's why you have to say, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I just messed up. I just did a piece of stupid yesterday, but right now I ask God to forgive me and he forgave me and and it's erased. And I'm not going to bring it up. And husband, don't you bring it up either. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen.